Panzer! Gentlemen, I'm out here in Finland, thanks to Veris Tuleka, there's a match going on, so if you hear some extra gunfire during the talking portion, they're running their RO stages so we can do the actual shooty shoot tomorrow. So bear with me on the sound. Today we're actually going over a very beautiful and elegant weapon system, the STG-57. Now I'm not Swiss enough to go over this, so I'm going to have to employ the help of some friends. But before we dive on in, I want to thank the sponsors of this video, which is going to be Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, fantastic young Zoomers in the Millsurf space. They got me a pair of Alpenflage uniform. This isn't the one they got me, I'm borrowing this from my Swiss friends. But they got me my own pair of Alpenflage uniform, and damn do I love me some Alpenflage. The ladies love Alpenflage. So big thank you to them. I love them very much. They are very good to me, so I want to show them the proper love. Link for them will be in the description down below. Make sure you go check them out. Let them know that I sent you. Sure, we also have to thank SDI, another sponsor of this episode, and they've been a great sponsor of the channel. So get accredited gunsmith training, take your education to the next level, and learn how to work on firearms in a um, accredited sense. Always a big help, big thank you to SDI. I also have to thank AAC, America's Ammunition Company, for sponsoring this video. They do an excellent job of providing the channel with ammo for us to shoot. Sadly, they didn't have any 7.5 Swiss for us to shoot, but for the most part, they always take care of us, and so they do a great job, and they will take care of you. Mike, how do I say like and subscribe in Swiss? Like or abonniere. Most elegant, most exquisite. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm god, a god who likes Swiss pastries and Swiss watches. That cheese we tried that I liked, couldn't figure out what it was, it was Swiss cheese. Now this beautiful SCG-57 is not mine. It belongs to my new Swiss friend, Brody. Brody, get over here. Hi. How are you doing? Well, great, how are you? I am doing good, how are you? Well, well, perfect. Well, Brody, this is a beautiful Swiss rifle. I know you're a Swiss man wearing Swiss camo that you let me also borrow, so big thank you for letting this happen. It's a beautiful treat getting to come to Europe and meet friends as elegant as you, <laughs> as Swiss as you are, and getting to run such a just, I, I mean, I know I'm just absolutely waxing over the gun, but I, I love it very much. So it's a very cool gun to me at the least because these are pretty hard to come by in the States. So thank you very much. Now, what do you want to tell me about this gun? Well, um, first off, technically it's not a Sturmgewehr 57. Technically it's a PE 57. Oh, it's a PE 57. So oh. the main difference from that is just if it's a um, factory semi-auto or not. Gotcha. This okay. one is. Okay. So the PE is a semi-auto designation. Exactly, yes. Gotcha, okay. A factory designation. I am definitely not an expert on this gun. This is my first time ever getting to shoot it, and I've, it's a very low round count. But the Swiss, of course, have a long culture and history with this gun. They have a lot of the ins and out knowledge of, well, this rifle. And they have a beautiful culture of, you would say, rifle ownership as well. Indeed, yes. Okay, so it's a good thing that he's here to help me out. I'll go over the gun real quick, and then Brody can also point out things that I may have missed or that I just, I'm just i not aware of because of the sheer lack of time on this particular weapon platform. Going over from a real quick perspective, the worst thing I don't like is the safety. It seemed like a quick afterthought what Brody was saying. The safety is probably the most unergonomic thing of here. We have our iron sights that flip up and down, which are pretty cool. Reminds me of the FG42. We have a carry handle, which is mega cool. Love me some good carry handle. And it doesn't have the risk like the FA carry handle of any deflection of brass so that's kind of nice we have a bipod that can either go forward or backwards which is very convenient pretty simple design brody was showing me there's a winter trigger on this bad boy bad boy counter just a triple check so i don't become a felon in europe or something like that oh uh, we have a cool little winter trigger that's pretty slick we got a mag release down here with these cool 24 round mags which are good for youtube 
Thanks, YouTube. Overall, gun's pretty simple. Now, Brody, what am I missing that I didn't talk about? Well, I think the biggest part, since it is a P57 yeah. instead of a Sturmgewehr, is that it has the scope mounting brackets that were only introduced um, later during the production with the Sturmgewehr. Mm -hmm. um, usually, the normal issue rifles wouldn't have those. But um, the Marksman versions would have them and then they would stay within the unit and would yeah. go home with the soldiers. Yeah. But um, the mountain brackets are exactly here with uh, front hooks yeah. and here in the back of the diopter. Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. So it would kind of screw in there, yeah. a quick detachment. That is very cool. Yeah. Another interesting thing probably is just for the diopter, the rear side alone mm. has more parts, more single parts than a Makarov pistol. Wait, what? Yes. yes, indeed. They were subcontracted to um, watch manufacturers. <laughs> Armorers would only have like entire units of rear sights they would just replace if one would break. Gotcha. Exactly. It looks very simple in certain areas, like the receiver, like the stamp metal, mm -hmm. but it's a very elegant looking process that went into this gun. I know I, I have big dumb monkey words I like to say, but what I'm trying to say is that the overall gun, it's like a very simple, but very elegant looking weapon. It's finally made, of course, with that Swiss elegance. It fills the need for the masculine urge to become a Swiss mercenary, <laughs> or I guess to fight for the papal guard. It does a good job in that aspect. Now, the Swiss had this goal of using, like, making this a do-it-all kind of platform, as most exactly. countries did during the Cold War. They wanted to get the most bang for their buck out of their military rifles. Now, you were saying this thing does a litany of things. I mean, it obviously does a litany of things. It has a big battle rifle cartridge, the 7.5x55. It has a nice, big, detachable magazine. And then it also has a unique thing where it fires these huge anti-tank grenades. And you actually have some that we can show off, right? Indeed, yes. I say we show off some cool anti-tank grenades. So we respawned in. Brody's now equipped with all his proper Swiss gear, which we'll go over in a second. Don't rush me. We're gonna do it, okay? But now I say we launch some rifle grenades or rocket grenades. What do, you, what do we call them? They're rifle grenades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to call it a rifle grenade. They're just a big anti-tank rifle grenade. All right, let's do it. So what do we gotta do? Okay, first thing you have to do. May I have the rifle? I guess. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the max. First thing, of course. Um, the rifle grenades were an individual weapon, so the idea was um, for a soldier, if he was in combat, that he can use this rifle grenade on its own, by his own um, intuition or on command, depending on the situation. Right. The first thing you would need to do, of course, is seeing, oh shit, I need a rifle grenade. Usually right. that's uh, through the alarm, alarm word, Achtung Panzer, watch out tank. Achtung Panzer. Then the first thing you do, if you're in combat stance, you put the rifle on safe, Preferably, you do that from cover. Let's say we have a trench. We go down, flip down the diopter, take out the rifle ammo. Then we will unload the rifle. Yeah. Then we will put the rifle on fire. Dry fire to make sure it's empty. Put it back on safe. Next thing, we go to the rifle grenade magazine, which holds uh, rifle grenade blanks. Mm -hmm. Insert the magazine. Usually, especially in a trench, you would prepare your rifle grenades. Yeah. But here, in this assault pack, we have space for two of them. We take them out, put it on the muzzle, spin the rifle grenade to make sure it doesn't have any damage in the tube, charge the rifle, push in the button, which releases the bolt. Mm. Now the rifle would be charged. Check if it is charged with the loaded chamber indicator. Since we're ready to fire, we would go back into a firing position. Mm. At the same time, we would put the rifle on fire. Yeah. Go up, take a shooting position, which is, um, holding the rifle with your weak hand yeah. up front, taking that stock as far up as possible under your, under your strong shoulder. Then, because it has a very strong recoil, you don't want to uh, hold on to the rifle. Push basically like you would hold a guitar or something. Put your flat of your hand against the receiver. You start to aim, which is the top of the night sight, mm -hmm. with the top of the grenade, which is your point of aim, point of impact. Gotcha. Hold on to dear life. Aim, and once you're ready to fire, the last thing you do is flip down the winter trigger and bang. If you hit, good for you. Yeah. If you don't hit, go down. Do it again. <laughs> put a new grenade on there, charge, <laughs> yeah. and redo the whole thing. Well, perfect. All right, uh, can, we, uh, can we send a grenade down range? We can do that, yes. All right, let's do it. Really? Achtung Panzer! If you can dodge a rifle grenade, you can dodge a ball. Put on fire. Winter trick is the last thing you do. Yeah. 
and really get it far up, hold on to it. Then the top of the night side, top of the grenade. Don't hold on to the pistol grip. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, it's on safe. All right. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Charge it. Exactly, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, push, no, push down, yeah. There you go. Up, it's hot. Good. Put it on fire. There we go. Exactly. Hip, hip, hip. No, way up, yeah. <laughs> exactly, and um, keep on to the barrel shroud, not to the handguard. Yeah. yeah. Hold really tight with your left hand, and when you're ready to fire, do that. Jeez. There you go. That's got some freaking recoil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's a pretty cool demonstration. I forgot to also mention this does have a loaded chamber check indicator on this, which is, I think, very cool. So when this gun came out in 1957, correct? It was uh, developed during 57 and then was introduced 58, 15. Okay. All right. So when this gun came out in the late 50s, I think this is a very forward-thinking design for that era of this. Of course, there are features on it that would be rather dated, the ergonomics, the safety, lack of modularity, of course, has become, you know, as time goes on, things do get outclassed. But overall, I would say, for that era, the thinking of this, I think it's a really cool package set up with the rifle, and then you got the kit with this Alpenflage kit, because everything is on Brody that he needs. His mags, his sustainment, his assault pack. The rockets are gone, we don't know where the rockets went, but I mean, he has all this stuff going on that makes it a very cool, unique little package. I mean, I think there was a lot of lessons learned post-World War II, and then the Swiss could also look at other conflicts going on. Maybe they looked at Korea, maybe looked at, I don't know what they did, but I'm assuming they took a lot away and they're like, all right, we want to have a really well-rounded rifleman. And I think this is an excellent little rifle to do that. And it's just, it's just so freaking cool. The Swiss know how it's done. Even, even the ammo, even the Swiss ammo looks beautiful. Everything about the Swiss aesthetic is just class and elegant. It's something to be said. Now, Brody, tell me about the Alpenflage kit you're wearing because it's a good little thing to go over because of the whole package. You can hold yeah. the, hold the well, gun. Thank you. Yeah. This whole thing is called the Kampfanzug. There's technically not a like a year designation to it, but this version is generally known in the collector's uh, circles as the M70. Okay. Um, the idea of the whole thing is, is as you mentioned, is uh, have, to have no webbing gear, yep. to carry everything that the soldier needs in combat on him yeah. with the uniform. Which means to have the rifle magazines up here with uh, three pouches holding a total of five magazines. Mm -hmm. In the front, you have um, on the left side, you'd have like some rations, some toiletries, stuff like that. Yeah. On the right side, as you have seen, would be the white magazine for the rifle grenades. Then on the side, you'd have a well bottle pouch, um, a pouch for your canteen, mm -hmm. your um, mess kit, and then on the back side for your shoe and rifle cleaning kit. Gotcha. In the little assault pack, you'd have two rifle grenades and then you'd usually at least carry your rain poncho, mm -hmm. and then you'd have extra space to fill up with all the things you might need. Gotcha, okay. It's a very cool kit. I mean, I like the idea of it, but I love, of course, I'm, I'm gonna go with modern kit because I like the idea of being able to take off what I'm wearing. It gets a lot comfier. When you're wearing your kit like that and you have to, it's just not as convenient if you wanted to get a little bit comfier in my opinion, but I still think it is overall very cool, especially for the era, for the era, for the time. It's impressive. It's not bad, but um, I think they had great ideas. They were just a bit limited of the mm. technologies of their time, yeah. which is like a very posh thing to say, but you have things like these rubberized patches on the legs and the arms, yeah. which are meant to like waterproof your uniform if you're like in a trench or in right. the fields. Um, it's not breathing at all, so um, it gets really hot. And it was actually very um, common for soldiers in the field to use their pocket knives to cut those patches off because they're just externally sewn on. Right. So they would uh, just cut them off. Well, Brody, thanks for stopping by and giving me the Swiss tour guide. I appreciate you greatly. Was there anyone you wanted to shout out? Um, yeah, most definitely. Um, if you are interested in more information about both the technical part and mm -hmm. the historical part of the Sturmgewehr 57 and its uh, rifle grenades, mm -hmm. definitely check out Dale the Sturmgewehr dude on YouTube. Mm -hmm. He has a wealth of knowledge about this rifle and its accoutrements. I think he's probably the most the most well-versed mm -hmm. in the entire world on this system at the oh, moment. perfect. Go check out Dale. So real quick, I'll just go over what it was like to shoot. I mean, this is my first time shooting it in the lack of experience I have, but there was an experience. So overall, the gun shot and handled pretty well. I was noticing some things being rather dated, such as the safety. Uh, ergonomically, that was kind of like a challenge. So if you're running up, keeping the gun on safe and then flipping it off, it was kind of like a big whole hassle to get my hand back over there. So that was a big thing. Recoil impulse was rather comfy. The trigger is also so pretty nice. It's a long travel. There's a long travel. For, actually, I can just check the indicator on top. What am I doing? Safety. So, 
little bit of like a wall, a little bit of travel, and then a nice little break. So it's it's weirdly stiff but weirdly nice. So yeah, you have like you have like this stiff trigger on the front end, stiff low travel, and then you have that break. So it's a pretty nice trigger. The sight picture, uh, very comfy. Like I was saying, it's very much like reminiscent of an FG42 or this even came after the FG42. So reminds me of that. Height over bore, it seems like a very modern aspect in that sense with how high the sights are up. So let's keep that into account, but it's not like you're doing some high speed shooting with this. It's very much a battle rifle in that it's, it's like you have an emphasis on marksmanship, accuracy, employing your rifle and having friends in the fight with you. So. It is a freaking cool weapon. It is a treat to go over it. So, of course, thank you, Barris Deleka. Thank you, Finland, for hosting us. And then, of course, thank you, Brody, for bringing the rifle and all the kit to show off. Gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe. Your comments are sacrificed to the Swiss cheese gods, gods of which who enjoy Swiss cheese. If you want to support the channel any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise. I have nothing else for you. I'll catch you on the flip. Um, it has a nice big magazine box, a detachable magazine. Trying to let the rounds go. <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bray, I think it. Uh, I can't talk. Oh, Bray. Grantha moment. All right.